Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This video was dreamt up by you guys. Over on Instagram, I have just created a broadcast channel and I posted a poll over there for you guys to vote on. And this video idea was by far the most voted on. And essentially we're gonna be talking about my big mistake in spending about $1,800 on trying to upgrade my SAM 5 for shooting competitions and how it didn't work out so well. This video is going to be a lot of me talking, so I do apologize for that. But if you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, I encourage you guys to do that. If you're not following me on Instagram, that's a great way to jump aboard the broadcast channel and help kind of steer uh, the channel into what next videos you'd like to see. And uh, you get to see a whole bunch of other behind the scenes type of stuff as far as what's coming into the channel to um, review for future videos and so on and so forth. So I'd encourage you guys to do that and I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, so let me set the stage for you. Why was I trying to spend so much money into upgrading my SAM 5? Well. We have to go in our way back time machines to August of 2022. I know it's a long time ago, but just bear with me. <laughs> Last year I competed in the tactical games and I really enjoyed that two gun competition. It's basically a two gun competition with like kind of like a CrossFit games type of feel to it. You have to do a physical activity and you have to shoot and they dream up some really cool things for you to do. If you guys are interested, I highly encourage you to check it out, especially if you're uh, into fitness like I am and working out and just trying to be as healthy as possible. This would be a really cool um, two gun to kind of get into. With that being said, one of the biggest takeaways that I had from last year's meet was I needed to be able to shoot precisely at a six inch target at 100 yards. And what I found was my setup at the time was just not going to cut it. My setup was a SAM 5 with a 509T on an Intero rear sight mount. And while that did very well for me at Clash Bash with me coming in in the top third of all of the competitors, um, it didn't work out so well at the tactical games. And the reason for that is Every time that you miss your target, you drop 10 seconds. And you are competing not only with the people to the left and right of you, but you're also competing against the clock as well. So you want to be as fast as possible and as precise as possible. So a lot of you might be like, well, 100 yards uh, is not that far and shooting six inches at 100 yards, most rifles, most modern rifles should be able to do that. And I would agree with you. However, you have to take into account the physical activity that you have to do as well. One of the iterations was lifting a sandbag up over a yoke. Uh, you had to do three sets of that. The first set was three times, the second set was four times, and the third set was six times. Once you got your sandbags over the yoke as many times as you're supposed to, then you had to do a 20 meter fireman's carry with 130 pounds in each hand. That gets you to the firing line, then you have to shoot. That's a lot, that's a lot of weights. So you're already smoked just after the first set and you're trying to be precise at 100 yards. So that's the reason why I thought maybe a magnified optic might be a better solution. And I kind of toyed with that as well. I used this Primary Arms ACSS uh, LPVO. This is the ACS Raptor. And I had it set up on this Midwest Industries mount, but as you can see, the optic is already pushed as far forward on the rings as possible. The rings are as far forward on the mount as possible, and I just wasn't getting the correct eye box on the scope here. In fact, I was having to push the rifle away from my body just to be able to see the optic and put the uh, reticle on target. And that was a bit of a problem. Not as much stability as I would like. So fast forward to Kalash Bash in October 
If you guys haven't been there, there's a lot of vendors that uh, come out to that event. And I was able to talk to the guys from Texas Weapon Systems. They have a railed dust cover that they call the dog leg. And I was really interested in that because I thought that I could put my LPVO further forward on that dog leg. And that would kind of solve some of the problems. Fast forward to early part of this year, I walked into my local shop, American Cash Exchange, and they do a really good job of separating me from my cash. And when I walked into the store after buying the dog leg, they had this optic right here. This is the Elcan DR one to four scope. And let me tell you, this is actually a really, really cool scope. I've actually wanted one of these for a very long time. You know, uh, Grand Thumb has made these very popular. And I thought that this would actually be a good solution. I don't have to worry about a eye box too very much. Uh, I can set this as far back or as far forward as I needed it to, to get that correct spacing on my eye. And I was able to flip this uh, magnifier from one power to four power very easily. So it's on one power right now, I'm shouldering it, I just come back here to a mag hold and flip it forward and boom, I'm at four power right there. And I can just easily go back and forth just that quickly. So I thought that this might be actually a good solution. And then I took it to the range and decided, nope, nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> The reason why is while aesthetically this looks really cool, uh, functionally for what I need it to do at the tactical games, it's not going to cut it. The reason why is as it stands, the SAM-5 is eight pounds. You add the dog leg, you add this optic, and I've taken my eight pound rifle to almost a 12 pound rifle. And that's a major problem when you have to be able to run one to three miles in full kit. Adding that much weight is just going to wear you down even further and it's going to cause you to throw shots even worse than I was already doing. So I spend a lot of money on this optic and unfortunately, it's just not going to work for me. And uh, that makes me a sad panda because like I said, this is a really cool look to this rifle, but at the end of the day, it's just not going to work out. So the problem still exists. And the question is, how am I going to solve that? Well, with some help from my contact over at Primary Arms, they got me set up with their three power micro prism optic. And I think that that might actually be a really good solution. I'm actually going to set that up and run it for Kalashnikov coming up here next week. And I think that it's going to be a viable option because I'm going to get that magnification that I need, but I'm not getting so much magnification that it's going to cause me to have issues in shooting targets up close. Is that going to actually be the case? Well, we'll find out next week when I run it at Kalashnikov. But at the end of the day, pairing that up with a RS Regulate rear justified mount, that's going to give me enough room to not only get that correct eye box for shooting from you know, like the prone position, but also it's going to help me get that magnification that I need to be precise at longer distances. Uh, so we'll see if that's all going to work out. I'm going to provide you guys with an update video after I get back from Kalashnikov to tell you my thoughts of the two different rifles that I'll be running over that weekend. And, uh, obviously provide you guys with some more content with all that being said, what do you guys think? about my, my mess up. Uh, should I have just went back to the basics and tried to find a simpler way to solve the problem? What are some of the suggestions that you have in solving that problem? Remember, I have to be precise at 100 yards, six inch groups after doing enormous amounts of physical exertion. So you have the stress of time, you have the stress of physicality, and you're fighting the rifle as well. So that's kind of what I'm facing. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And yeah, that was my $1,800 mistake. 
with all that being said, we're gonna continue to put out some great content. I hope you guys enjoy what I've been doing. If you have enjoyed what I've done, not only in this video, but some of my other videos, and you're not subscribed, I encourage you guys to do that as well. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thanks again. More videos coming up here pretty soon. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.